welcome to another episode of Sailing Sweet Ruka. As you can see behind me, there is no land anywhere in sight. We are out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean right now, under sail, cruising along, headed west. It's been a long time since we posted, and our goal now is to get you caught up to real time. So let's take a look back and see what we've been up to, how we prepared the boat to sail in the Pacific, and what we did over a summer in the fjords of Patagonia. Welcome to Sailing Sweet Ruka. I'm Kate, this is Curtis, and Roxy the dog. We left the east coast of the United States with our J-Boat J46 and set out to sail around the world via Cape Horn and the Cape of Good Hope. With Cape Horn and the brilliant fjords of Patagonia under our belt, it was time to do some maintenance. We became quite busy with the usual unexpected added projects, and thus the next few episodes will be summaries instead of in-depth stories in our attempt to get you caught up to real time. At the end of our last episode, you know that we arrived in Port de Mont after a 1,200 mile journey up the fjords of Patagonia. After such a long journey, we needed to do a little bit of boat work to re-prepare Sweet Ruka for her continued voyage. One of the first things that we wanted to do was work on our new mainsail, which arrived in Uruguay, but we didn't have the correct battens yet due to shipping problems in South America. The battens that were originally provided, which were, they were the only ones that were available that were even close to fitting in South America at the time, they were just a little bit too thick and they weren't really going to work perfectly with our mainsail. So I had to go back to the United States anyway to do a little bit of racing. So I contacted RBS Battens in Washington and they were able to get me the correct battens and we fine tuned and custom made these battens specifically for Sweet Ruka's mainsail and they cut them to a specific length so that I could smuggle them back in on the airplane to Chile and then finally be able to reinstall these battens so we could, for the first time in a long time, be able to put our brand new mainsail up and see how it looked. We also switched to a two to one halyard from a one to one halyard to make the hoist a little bit easier. And we reinstalled the mainsail on the boom. We hoisted it up and took a look at it at the dock. And wow, it looked absolutely beautiful. We tried to crack off a few other projects while I was gone as well. One of the things that we needed to do was regular engine maintenance. And since I wasn't there to do this, and we also needed a few small parts, O-rings and gaskets, we decided to reach out to the local Yanmar mechanic. His name was Leonard. He came to the boat. He took care of everything that we needed. He did a fantastic job. He was on time. The work he did was clean. And he also brought Kate a few gifts of, uh, of honey. And uh, what else did he get? And churros. Leonard, you did a fantastic job on the engine and anyone else that comes through Port Mont that has a Yanmar, I think he's the best mechanic around and you guys should definitely reach out to him if you guys need anything. It's way easier than trying to source all the parts and drive to multiple stores. Just call them up and uh, they work for a great rate down there. It's very reasonable and you're able to get a lot of really good quality service on your Yanmar engine. So while I was back in the United States to do a little bit of racing in the Mackinac races, Kate's mom came down to Chile to visit her. They had a great time touring the area around Puerto Montt and Puerto Varas. They did a little bit of tourism. They visited the local shops uh, and Helmo, uh, which there's a great supply of, of cheeses and artisanal foods. They just had an absolutely wonderful time. Kate got herself a new sweater and uh, they just had a great time enjoying the local culture. So after I returned back to Puerto Montt from the United States, we ended up meeting some followers. The channel Sweet Ruka is growing more and more each and every day. And now as we go into different marinas, people are starting to know us. And one of the people that we ran into that knew us and has followed our journey for a really long time are our new friends Jorge and Isabel. I helped Jorge with a few boat projects on his Beneteau and we also had the chance to visit their wonderful house in the hills of Chile, uh, which overlooked the sea. And we had just an absolutely wonderful time uh, meeting them and uh, enjoying the, the wonderful culture of the Chileans. We had a really great adventure with another single-handed solo sailor named Harry, who's sailing the vessel called Phi Wave. 
He's an older gentleman with a lot of experience in aircraft. He once flew his airplane completely around the world solo, and now he's trying to replicate his journey in the airplane via sailboat. We talked to him on board his boat, and we also did a little bit of a tour of Chill Away with him in a rental car. It was a wonderful experience, and we hope to catch up with him down the road. Another issue that we encountered while sailing up the fjords of Patagonia was an issue with our batteries. Half of our lithium batteries, which are LIFEPO4 from Renogy, they died when we were in Puerto Williams. Of course, way down in Puerto Williams, there's no availability to get replacement for those batteries, so we had to sail up the fjords with about 300 amp hours less than what we had budgeted for. This caused a lot of uh, extra burning of diesel that we didn't want to uh, have to burn, and uh, it really made our life just a little bit tougher, especially with all the editing equipment and all the electricity we consume in order to make the videos. So when we arrived at Puerto Mont, I tore these batteries apart, hoping to find a little bit more information. What I found was that the BMS, or the battery management systems on the batteries, failed. So we tried to contact Renogy. I was gonna hope also, while I go home in the United States, to be able to get some replacement BMSs, but that didn't turn out either. So uh, we'll show you another future battery project and some more information on these original Renogy batteries and what we chose to replace them with in the future. Some other things that we wanted to do while we were in Puerto Mont was a little bit of woodwork. Our boat is 23 years old, and as such, it has a little bit of wear and tear because of that. But we're always staying on top of maintenance, so one of the things that we needed to do was re-glue some panels in our doors to make sure that our doors continue to open and close freely. As a little of the old epoxy or glue seemed to loosen up over time, it wasn't too hard of a process. It was fairly simple. Uh, and it was a really good project to hammer out while we were in port. The next item on our list was our boom bang. With all of the offshore sailing and all of the big waves, uh, the boom and the mainsail is a very uh, heavy component that moves around a lot while we're under sail. And we had some bolts start to rattle loose and one of the bolts broke inside of our boom bang fitting which holds the boom bang to the boom itself. We didn't want to attack this ourselves because we knew that if we re-drilled it off center, uh, we would go straight into the soft aluminum and we would have a problem. So we also took this uh, to the local sailmaker who referred it to a machinist. And well, that was also a giant failure. The piece came back with the hole drilled off center and then also they broke a steel tap off inside of the aluminum uh, bang fitting. What that would do would cause galvanic corrosion, so we had to get that piece out. We sent it back again, and what they decided to do next was cut the piece in half, take out the broken tap, and then re-weld the piece, which actually wasn't even TIG welded, it was brazed, and so that piece was essentially ruined. So the only other option we had was to find a machine shop and have a completely new piece remachined from scratch. So we found a wonderful machine shop in Puerto Mont called CNC Sur. The owner is actually a sailor. He's a snipe dinghy sailor throughout Chile and he treated us really, really well. Everyone at the shop did a wonderful job. Okay guys, we finally have our new part here in. Uh, it fit absolutely perfect. Uh, I wish I would have videoed more of the install for you, but it was cold, windy, and I was by myself. Uh, the only difference from the old part is it's not anodized. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be a big problem. Uh, we're going to keep on sailing with it. And uh, whew, we're excited. This is a big, big piece that needed to be done for a long, long time. Okay, back to work. And then we actually went back to them to have them make a few more Delrin pieces that uh, were easier just to make rather than buy. So those are some little ends for our tracks that we also reinstalled on the boat. After such a long upwind journey through the Chilean fjords, it was very important that we did a rig inspection. Sailing upwind for so many miles puts a lot of wear and tear on the rig. So we had to go through and look through everything very, very carefully. And that's exactly what we did. Everything was good except for one thing. 
we found a little bit of corrosion on one of our chain plate bolts. So we decided to take the chain plates out, rebed them, and inspect them. Upon doing so, we found out that some of the other bolts had started to go bad as well, so we needed to replace those. We, we went and saw our friends at Pernos Pacifico who were supplying us with all of our hardware, and uh, they didn't have the correct bolts. And it turns out the bolts that we needed that fit our specific chain plates were nowhere to be found anywhere in Chile. We tried contacting McMaster Car back in the US, but they wouldn't ship them or they wouldn't even accept an order from, from Chile. So we had to find another option. We went back to CNC Sur and they did a brilliant job at custom making our chain plate bolts out of 316 stainless steel. They're better than they were when they're new. While we were there, we also had them die test and go through our chain plates so make sure everything was 100%, and then we reinstalled the chain plates. Reinstalling the chain plates was a long and lengthy process, but as you can imagine, a vital one. After the plates and bolts were on, we had to reattach the rig and make sure it was to the necessary tension that we had it set at before. Of course, we had to regoop and rebed in between rain squalls. Now, we couldn't necessarily recommend spending a winter in Chile in Puerto Montt. It's a very difficult place to stay over the winter. It's very cold, it's very rainy, and it's very, very windy. Almost every three days, we had these huge storms come out of the north and just blow through the marina and dump rain and big, big winds. The other thing that the Chilean winter was difficult for was boat work. It was almost always raining, so it was very difficult to find a day where you could actually go outside and complete boat projects, especially if you needed paint and, and sealants to dry or anything like that. So we had to wait and time our boat work windows just perfectly. While back in the marina on the boat, doing a little bit of boat work, we started to notice some smoke off in the distance. Well, we thought this was just a normal fire, uh, coming out someone's chimney. It soon grew uh, to be much, much more than that, and we started he hearing fire department sirens. A real sad incident happened where an entire Chilean house went up in flames. And when you start to look at these houses, the way they're constructed and the way that they're heated, this can actually happen quite often, and it's very, very dangerous. With all of the wind and most of the houses heated with wood-burning fireplaces, Sometimes a draft can come back through the chimney and blow out ashes into the, these wooden houses and cause a terrible fire. And that's exactly what happened here. So we hope that everybody's okay. We actually heard nobody was hurt in this fire, thank goodness, and that um, everything is well and good and they'll be able to rebuild their house in the future. So best wishes uh, to those people. While back in the marina, we met another single-handed sailor named Gilles. We actually met him for the first time way back in Periopolis, Uruguay. We split directions with him. We saw each other very briefly again as he sailed off to Antarctica. And then we re-met again in Puerto Montt. So it ended up being his birthday and he was going to leave soon for French Polynesia. So we wanted to go out and have a nice dinner as none of us have been to a restaurant in a long, long time. So we had a wonderful evening with Gilles and we wish him the best as he sails off into the blue. Now, after all this boat work and all this cold weather in Puerto Montt and Kate having to hang out with me the whole time, it was time for Kate to get a little break from the boat and she took off with her friend Nora to go explore Chiloé. Specifically, there was the Chilean Independence Day being celebrated at the time. So there was a huge party going on in Ancud. They took a little bus trip out there and they had a wonderful, wonderful time taking in the Chilean culture. Some other projects that we needed to accomplish were with our sails and our stack pack. Of course, you saw we had a slight failure of one of our stack pack's lines uh, in the fjords. What was happening was 
the stitching was just starting to age. The stack pack is, you know, several, several years old. And with all of the sailing and all of this UV, over time, the stitching just wears out. So we took it to the local sailmaker named Daniel, and we worked with him in his shop to help get that fixed up. With all of the upwind sailing we did in the fjords, our number three jib took a little bit of wear and tear. As you remember, we patched it in Puerto Williams, down the leach, and that patch started to fail after a little while, so it was time to take that to get re-sewn as well. But in the end, Daniel didn't have time to do it, so we ended up buying a sewing machine ourselves and fixing that as well. While doing all the rig inspections, we also found that our Windex was broken, all the high winds took their toll, so Kate went up the mast to install a new Windex, and back down, and then we were ready to go again. A few other projects that were on our to-do list while we were here was some upgrades to our clutches and line management on the boat. Before we only had uh, two of our reefs able to come back to the cockpit, what we wanted to do was make it so we had all three reefs be able to come back to the cockpit, and we also wanted to have the vang accessible from the cockpit. That way, while at sea, offshore, you'd never have to leave the cockpit in order to put in a reef. So that's exactly what we did. And now we've got a really, really nice reefing setup and also everything, including the Vang, is accessible from the cockpit. Next up, it was time to test out our new mainsail. We've never sailed with it, only saw it at the dock. So we decided to bring our new friends, David and Juja, along for a test sail. They have a Valiant 44. They were parked right next to us and they become great friends during the time that we were all doing boat work in Puerto Montt. They hadn't been out sailing in a while, neither had we, so we decided this was a great chance to go out sailing together. And wow, the winds were perfect, the sail went up, it looked great, we we're hitting excellent boat speeds, and we couldn't be happier with the way things turned out. Last but not least on our project list is our refrigerators. We updated these while we were in Grenada several years back, and we didn't quite have the compressors in the ideal spot that we wanted, especially as we were going to travel into the warmer areas of French Polynesia. Currently, we had them located very close to our refrigeration boxes, which, which had the compressors mounted underneath the counter. That was taking up a little bit of space in the drawers, and also it dumps heat into the cabin, which is fine for sailing down to Patagonia. That's excellent. But for Polynesia, we needed to get that heat out of the cabin area and into the storage area. So we decided to finally relocate these compressors as we originally wanted to back into our uh, maintenance room or our garage. So we mounted these compressors up on the bulkhead behind the head, right over the top of our water maker. This way, all of our mechanical things are in one place and they're really easy to get to and service. As all of this boat work was just piling up and we've been trapped inside of the boat for so long over the winter, we all felt like we needed a group escape. So we rented a car, we took Roxy, and we drove down Carretera Austral to see a little bit more of Chile. If you guys don't know about Carretera Austral, it's a very famous road that goes down the coastline of Chile. It's absolutely beautiful, and it's a wonderful experience. And we're gonna show you a little bit more of that as well as we sail back down there in an upcoming episode in the summer. While this video is a summary of some major boat projects we had done in Puerto Montt, we didn't forget to live a little and spent a short weekend viewing some amazing sights inland and along Carretera Austral. Roxy was surely glad to have some fantastic hiking, even if raining and only for a short while. I wonder how she will do when we get back to sunshine and warm weather. After all of these delays and all of this boat work and all of this frigid cold, it was finally starting to warm up a little bit. And we had a choice. Do we sail in the wrong season to French Polynesia and possibly have to hurry and rush our way through or experience hurricane season in French Polynesia? Or do we take a little bit more time and explore Chile, the northern part of Patagonia, in the summer? So we decided upon the latter and we took off to the port captain's office. We got our new ZARP to cruise a complete loop around all of northern Patagonia, all the way down to Laguna San Rafael, and then all the way back to Puerto Montt before we head out into the Pacific. And this was an absolutely magnificent choice. 
We can't wait to show you what we do during that cruise in the next episode. I've got news though, it gets warmer. There's bathing suits, there's hot springs, there's waterfalls, there's wonderful cities, there's excellent food, and there's lots and lots of wonderful, wonderful flat water sailing in the Chilean fjords. Just absolutely beautiful. We're gonna show you guys this coming right up in the next episode. Until then, make sure to hit the subscribe button for us. It really, really helps. And if you really enjoy our content and you wanna get all of the real-time updates, head on over to our Patreon. You can join it for as little as $1 a month and get access to all kinds of behind the scenes footage and get all the information to exactly what we're up to right now. Another thing you can do to help support our channel if you really enjoy following along with us and spreading the good word about sailing is head on over to our website, www.sweetruka.com. There you can find our live tracker to see exactly where we are right now, including how fast we're going and what the wind speeds are. And then you can also stop by our store, buy a little bit of Sweet Ruka swag that we've got on sale to be able to support our channel and spread the word. Fair winds, everybody. We'll see you next episode. Stay tuned next week as we highlight our trip around the northern end of the Patagonian fjords, where we visit numerous volcanic hot springs, impressive waterfalls and amazing bird eye views, and where we battle massive icebergs in the world's northernmost tidewater glacier. And of course, we will highlight some of the most magnificent sailing from this part of the world as one of the first, if not the first, YouTube channel to highlight it. We can't wait to share more of our adventures and get you caught up to real time. A special thanks to those patrons whose names you can see scrolling on the screen. We wouldn't be able to share these videos without you. Thank you and see you next time!